We are continuing our topic of epistemology. We're going to take a look at a work by Hilary Putnam entitled Brains in a Vat. I recommend you give that a read. I'll provide a link in the description. So who is P Hilary Putnam? Well, he was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1926. Um, He's achieved many things. He's a computer scientist, mathematician, and philosopher. One of his best works in epistemology is in chapter one of his book, Truth, Reason, Truth, and History, entitled Brains in a Vat. So the argument in this work is one against radical skepticism. And the argument that is used is a transcendental argument. And this uh, transcendental argument tries to show that skepticism is incoherent or self-refuting by trying to show that the logical preconditions of the skeptical claim predisposes its own falsity. So let's look at some uh, basic concepts that we reviewed before. So the referent depends on what is causing experience and resemblance of the referent is not sufficient for reference. So say there is two twins, Susan and Stacy. If Susan were to go missing one day and you were shown a photo of Stacy on a missing poster, it would be incorrect to say that the picture was of the missing Susan, even though the picture looks exactly like Susan. Meaning needs a causal connection back to the reference, so resemblance is not sufficient. Resembling a thought about X is not enough to make it about X. The thought has to be traced back to the respective reference. So we'll be using this concept in the argument. So the first case that's presented is the what I'll call is the minimal brain in the vat case. So the first case considers, if one considers that I am a brain in a vat, then that statement cannot be true. And even if one is a brain in a vat, saying that you are cannot be true. So why would this be the case? We'll take a look at it in two major steps. So in step one, we ask the question, what is a brain in the vat thinking? So at least in the minimal brain in the vat case is where a brain has always been a brain in a vat and has always been hooked up to electrodes, giving it experiences and sens sensations in a uh, virtual world. Thus all experiences have been in a virtual reality. So what is the brain in the vat's intentionality? So if a brain in the vat points and says, there are flowers on the table. The brain in the vet's intentionality is of virtual reality flowers, not real ones. If a brain in the vet makes a claim that there is a cat in the room, then the brain in the vet is not wrong because his intentions are to refer to virtual reality cats. And since the brain in the vet has causal interaction with virtual reality cats, he is correct. It would be a mistake to think that the brain in the vet's thoughts refer to the real world just because they resemble thoughts of the real world. For the brain in the vet to be wrong, you have to think that they are referring to the real world. So let's take a look at step two. So let us say that you are a minimal brain in the vat, and you're watching this video and you say to yourself, I am a brain in the vat. Would what you say be correct? You would be referring to a virtual brain in a virtual reality vat, not the real ones. 
for there is no causal, causal connection to real brains and real bats. Therefore, it would be incorrect because you are not a virtual brain, but an actual one. And you are not in a virtual reality vet, but an actual vet. If we are in this scenario, radical skepticism seems to be self-refuting. Let's consider another case. This I'll call the kidnapped Brain and Levet case. So let us suppose one day you are walking home from the store and a van pulls up beside you. Men jump out and abduct you. The next thing you know, you wake up in your bed believing it was all a dream. Unknown to you, a mad scientist has kidnapped you and removed your brain and placed it into a vat hooked up with electrodes. You are now a brain in the vat. Now, in this virtual world, you find yourself one day in a philosophy class. And in that class, you're learning about brains in a vat. And you think to yourself, I am a brain in a vat. In this case, you would be correct, for you have causal connections to real brains and real vats. Thus saying, I am a brain in a vat is a true statement. So, if we are indeed in this kidnapped brain in a vat scenario, we are still left with the problem of radical skepticism. Because for all we know, we could be kidnapped brains in a vat. And in thinking so, we could be correct in thinking that we are kidnapped brains in a vat because we have causal connections to real brains in real vats. So, I'll leave you with some questions. Do you agree with Putnam's conclusion of the minimal brain in the vat case? Why or why not? How do you think the kidnapped brain in the vat case can be dealt with? As usual, feel free to answer in the comments section along with any questions or comments you may have. Taking a look at next time, we'll be switching gears and putting epistemology to the side for now and looking into metaphysics. We'll be examining one of the most important metaphysical questions in Western philosophy, that is, does God exist? Due to the fact that most of the philosophical work that has been done has been done with God of the Abrahamic religions, so we'll focus on that conception of God. The next video will be an overview of the topics I will cover in this next unit of videos. So if you found this video helpful, um, please rate the video, um, leave a comment, and if you want to keep on updated on videos as they come out, um, you could subscribe. See you next time.